let us open the Bible in the book of Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 20 to 35. Hallelujah. A message just for men, right? My son, keep thy father's commandment. Notice, notice, it doesn't say my daughter. It says my son. Amen? Keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about, about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee, number one, when thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. Number two, when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. Amen. Three advantages. Amen. Or privileges. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. To keep thee. To keep who? My, thy, my son. Amen. To keep thee from the evil woman. Notice, when the Bible says my son, it is speaking to a regenerated one. As, as, some, as someone who was born again. Amen. My son. Amen. Praise the Lord. To keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Verse 25. Lost not after her beauty in thine heart. Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a, a horrid woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals? and his feet not be burned. So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her, touch her, shall not be innocent. Men do not despise a thief, if he is still to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be, he, if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. But whose committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom. Neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. Amen. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for this part of the scripture. And we want to receive your word to glorify your name. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Have your seat. Okay, my topic today is some tips to avoid sexual sin. Sexual sin, amen. Sexual sin, I mean adultery and fornication. Amen? That's why I said to you, it is a message just for men. My son. Remember the introduction, verse 20. My son. Amen? Praise the Lord. Some tips, amen, or advices to avoid, avoid sexual sin. These tips are God's commands prevent sexual sin. Amen? If you read verse 20, it says, My son, as I said to you, someone who is regenerated, born of God and not of flesh. Amen? Who belong to the family of God, someone who has been adopted by the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen? Bible says, Keep Thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Of course, in this case, uh, Solomon is speaking to one of his sons, right? Of course, it is the, how to say, Jewish tradition that the father, the, Jew, the Jewish father used to teach the commandments of the Lord to his or their sons. Amen? 
and, by, and it was part of Jewish education. If you go to Deuteronomy chapter 6, praise the Lord, verse 6 to 9. And these words which I command thee shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Amen. And shall notice before we teach the word of God to our children, we have to be an example. Amen. That's why the Bible says, This word which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Before I teach my daughter or my children how to look for the Lord, how to obey God, how to serve the Lord, I have to be an example. Amen. And then thou shalt teach them diligently unto my children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest in by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as formed okay blessed be the name of the lord you know why we have to first of all to keep the commandments and then to teach our children verse 12 says the reason then beware lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage if we don't read the Bible if we don't put the Bible or the Word of God in action in our lives if we don't teach our children amen we may forget our God and we may forget from what place he took us out. Amen? Remember that we were dead in our sins and trespasses. And he quickened us and resurrected us. We were in hell. And he gave us life. Amen? That's why we have to teach our children the commandments of God. That's why the father is saying, My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them those commandments. Verse, uh, Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 21. Bind them, continue upon thine heart, and tie them upon and about thy neck. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just go. To verse 24 if we keep those commandments or obey them the result of it is that they will keep us from sexual sins Proverbs 6 24 says to keep thee from the evil woman from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman that verse in New International Version 1984 says, Keeping you from the immoral woman. Amen? From the immoral woman. Immoral woman is a woman who is bound of the vice of sex. And she is not conformed to have sex just with his how to say couple or spouse or with just one man but he's looking for other experiences in more woman amen praise the lord bible says if we keep the commandments god will keep us from that woman because that woman got the experience how to seduce a man amen how to convince easily a simple man. Amen? Praise the Lord. You know, man has authority delegated by God. Man has power delegated by God. But the woman has also power. And that power is the power of sedu seduction. Seduction? Seduction. Seduction. Could you understand? So that a woman is able to disarm the strongest 
man of the world just by a simple glance or some words <laughs> amen that's why the Bible says to keep you from that woman who is powerful in her eyes, in her words. Notice, eyes and words. Amen? Bible says, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue, flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Proverbs 25 says, the first step, how the first advice or command of the father to his son Proverbs 6.25 Lost not after her beauty in thy heart Amen Praise the Lord It is a commandment Lost not after her beauty in thine heart let me tell you something. We are in a society where, I don't know, but every woman is beauty. Amen? Attractive. And they do the best to be more attractive. And today with medicine, they provide methods to be more attractive. Amen? Surgeries to reduce the belly. Surgeries to extend or the, some parts of the body to be more attractive. Surgeries to, how to say, to take away wrinkles, to change the nose, the, the shape of the nose, right? Praise the Lord. Bible says, Lost not after her beauty in thine heart. Amen. In other words, why Bible says, Lost not after her beauty in thine heart. And Jesus, by the way, says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. Amen. Matthew 5, verse 28, concerning adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Notice, in his heart, not in his eyes. Because we can see women around with our eyes. But what about if we allow that image? That shape, that beauty, to go to our heart. And to think about her. And to meditate about her. All the time. That is the problem. To watch a woman with our eyes is not a problem. Otherwise, we should be blind. Could you understand? But the problem is when we keep the thought of that last image of that woman in our heart. As David did. Bible says in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 11 verse 2 notice. Bible says that David was on the roof. Washing a woman who was washing herself. Watching a woman who was washing herself herself second samuel chapter 11 please and bible says verse 2 and it came to pass in in evening tide when the day when david arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of his king's house and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself and the woman was very beautiful to look upon amen till it was a problem. First of all, because we cannot discover the nakedness of others. 
she was naked. Secondly, she, David should run in the, into the presence of God to say, Lord, help me. I don't want, amen, that image, that beauty in my heart. Take away from my heart, Lord. You see that our prayer must be in that direction. Take away from my heart, Lord. Because the problem is lost not after her beauty in thine heart. Because Jesus says, whosoever lost after a woman, he has committed adultery in his heart. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to his name. Amen. How many of you worship the name of Jesus? Amen. It is a problem. Women are beautiful. Amen. And the problem is when we allow those images in our heart. Let's see the example of Abraham. Bible said that there was a famine in the land where he was. And Bible says that Abraham descended into Egypt. Because in Egypt there was abundance. And when he was about to enter into Egypt, Abraham realized that his, his wife was beauty. Go to the book of Genesis chapter 12, verse 11, please. And it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt, he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold, now, before or not, now, before or not, right? I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. So he didn't discover that his wife was beautiful before. <laughs> you, could you understand me? Sometimes we don't understand that our spouse is beautiful till our spouse is exposed to be watched by others. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you see the point? Amen. L notice. Let's pay attention to that word. Amen. And verse 11 says, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Behold now, now, before, behold now. It was not before. Could be when he got married, he saw her beauty. But the time passed by. Amen. And many women around said, Abraham said, there are plenty beautiful women. But when his wife knew that he, that he was going to be exposed, his beauty before the Egyptians, said, mm -mm. <laughs> my wife is beauty. Amen. He remembered the day when he knew her. Amen. And saw her beauty. Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse 12. Therefore it, it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say this is his wife and they will kill me but they will save thee alive say I pray thee that thou art my sister that it may be well with me for thy sake and my soul shall live because of thee you know Abraham lied and it came to pass that when Abraham, Abraham was come into Egypt the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair you notice and Sarai was not a wicked woman or immoral woman. You see that the beauty of women, amen, has power. Could you understand? Sarai was not a woman seducing, uh, uh, going to and fro by seducing men. Not. She was a serious woman. But can you imagine a strange woman dedicated to do it and more when she is beauty? If a simple woman 
with her beauty can make a man to be surrendered how much more a beautiful woman who is who is dedicated to seduce men that's terrible right this kind of woman i am speaking about this kind of women amen notice pharaoh let's read and then we uh, we, we continue knowing about, about this. The princess also of Pharaoh saw her and commanded. Notice, it was not also, not only the, the Bible said the Egyptians, the princess, and Pharaoh, the most important people of that nation, <laughs> saw her. The princess also of Pharaoh saw her and commanded her before Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. Wow. <laughs> And he entreated Abraham well for her sake or beauty. Amen. And he had <laughs> Abraham got sheep, oxen, he asses, and men servants and made servants. In that way, he got uh, Agar, right? The problem, <laughs> later problem. And she asses and camels. For what reason? Because she was beauty. <laughs> Abraham made business with the beauty of her wife. Amen? Of course, he lied. He got problems. And that, that small problem is affecting Israel now. You know, from that son, Agar, remember that he got made servants and Agar was there. And then later, Bible said that Abraham had a baby with Agar, Ishmael. And Ishmael is the father of all Arabians, Muslims. And all of them hate Israel. Terrible. So we cannot play with the beauty of our wives. Amen. We cannot make business. Praise the Lord. But if a simple woman, serious woman, amen, let's read, and the Lord plague, okay, let's, let's read till here, and then we continue reading, because I want to develop the message, amen? Lost not after her beauty in thine heart. If a simple or serious woman can make us to sin with covetousness, how much more a beautiful woman who is dedicated to seduce men. Amen? Praise the Lord. Bible says in Proverbs chapter 6 verse 25, Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Amen? Praise the Lord. Neither let her take thee with her, high, her eyelids. Take thee. It's coming from the Greek. Lo kak. Lo kak. Amen. A primitive root to take. Which means carry away or drawn or fetch. Trap. Amen. With her eyelids. Praise the Lord. Pagan women and um, more harlots used to make up their eyes to seduce men. According to the Gill's Bible commentary, says about this it was the customs of harlots to make up their eyes to seduce men if you want to get that information you may find in Gill's entire commentary of the bible concerning that verse of the bible and also ezekiel 23 verse 40 amen because israel and the women of israel fell in that apostasy 
making up their eyes to seduce men as the harlots. If you read, uh, praise the Lord, Ezekiel 23, verse 40. And furthermore, that ye have sent for men to come from far, and to whom a messenger was uh, sorry. I am not reading 23. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, and to whom a messenger was sent, and lo, they came for whom thou didst wash thyself, paintedst thy eyes, and deckest thyself with ornaments. Painted, painted or made up thine eyes. Amen. It was the attire of an harlot, according to Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10. Amen. And people of Israel fall in that. Why? Because people of Israel mingle with the pagan nations in such a way, for example, Ahab. Ahab got a wife from Moab. A woman of Moab, I, I don't know, no, no, she was from Amon, Amon or Amon. And she was a princess, a, a, also a priestess. I am speaking about Jezebel. And she brought that custom to Israel. And what was the custom? Let's read in 2 Kings, Kings chapter 9. Amen. Praise the Lord. Remember, remember when Jehu, Jehu was appointed by God, sent by Elisha to kill the house of Ahab. Amen. To destroy all the house of Ahab to accomplish the word of God spoken by Elijah. Amen. And Jehu went, Jehu went and God the son of Ahab and Bible says that the son of Ahab asked him in verse 22 and it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu that he said he said peace Jehu and he said amen and he answered what peace so long as the whoredoms whoredoms or halotries amen or the adulteries of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many she used to be a woman like Proverbs chapter 6 is speaking about Amen. She was beauty in such a way that Ahab brought her to Samaria to be his wife. Amen. And the Bible said Jehu killed him. And after killing him, Jehu was going to kill her mother, his mother, Je Je Jezebel. And verse 30 says, And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, how he killed the king of Samaria and the king of Judah, both. Amen. And Bible says she painted her face. Amen. Literal, it means that were painted, made up her eyes with paint, as the customs of the harlots. Amen. And look it out. At a window, amen. As and as Jehu entered into at the gate, she said, Had Simri peace who slew his master? Because Simri was, after killing his master, was killed. Je, that woman was saying, Hey, if you kill me, you will be killed as well, right? But verse 32, he lifted up his face to the window. And saw her and said, Who is on my side? Let me tell you something. Jezebel made up her eyes. She 
was old. By that time, she was a grandmother. Could you understand? But what she tried to do with making up her eyes was trying to look younger, number one. And number two, try to calm down the wrath of Jehu. Because she was accustomed to seduce men in that way. Amen? Praise the Lord. But Jehu didn't see her eyes. Or didn't, or was not catched by her eyes. He was catched by the word of God spoken to kill her in Jezreel to accomplish the word of God spoken by Elisha. Amen? And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who there look there looketh out to him two or three eunuchs or eunuchs? He said, Throw her down. So they threw her down and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on, on the horses and he threw her under foot. Amen. Praise the Lord. But what I am speaking to you now is that it was a custom to the harlot and pagan women so different than Israel, that the women of Israel. Amen. But the women of Israel got that pagan custom. A pagan custom that God, amen, uh, hated and rejected. In such a way that the Bible says that the women of Israel are haughty and walk with wanton eyes because of it. Go to the book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 16. It is just information, right? Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughter of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making tinkling with their feet. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In the day of the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet, and their cowls, and their, and their round tires like the moon, and chains, and the bracelets, and the mufflers, and everything. Amen? But what I am speaking about is the eyes. Wanton eyes. That word wanton, you know what that word means? Amen. Sedu seductive eyes. To make up the eyes just to seduce. Just to catch the attention of men. Amen. The purpose of Satan is Make up your eyes because I want Christians to lost after you in their hearts. That's why lost not after her beauty in their heart, neither let her catch you or take thee with her eyelids. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many of you are understanding this? Let me tell you something. A beautiful woman. Praise the Lord. Who speaks to us and then look at, look at our eyes and smile. It disarmor any strong man. Because that is the power of sedition. And more when this woman make up their eyes to look more beauty more beautiful are you getting through amen praise the lord the commandment what is lost not after her beauty in thine heart 
when we ask, when we watch a woman around or outside men, my son, Bible says, that my son lost not after her beauty in the heart. If you see her and then those thoughts come to our heart, say to the Lord, let's say to the Lord, put away those thought, thoughts, Lord. Because Bible says that the regenerated one, the ones who are in Christ, walk not in the flesh but in the spirit. And to walk in the spirit is to mortify the deeds of the flesh through the spirit of God. And to mortify the deeds of the flesh is to say, hey, thought, it is not, how to say, allow you to be here in my heart. Get away. Father, please, I don't want to displease you. Put away these thoughts from my heart. You see the point? Amen? Glory to his name. But why I cannot hold her beauty in my heart? And why I cannot let her to watch me with that eye, wanton eyes? Some reasons why we should not lust after her. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 26 says the main reason. For by means of a horrid woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Amen? Let's read Proverbs, uh, Judges, Judges chapter 16, verse 1. Then went Samson to Gaza. And what happened? Six, judge, judges 16, verse 1. Then went Samson to Gaza. And so there an harlot. Amen? Look at me, please. For example, if we go to the streets and we see a, a harlot, we say, right? But if that harlot is beauty, could you understand? It's dangerous. And more when she seduces us with her eyes, and with her words. It's dangerous. The Bible says he saw a harlot there in Gaza and went in unto her. What the Bible says, for by means a horrid woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Hunt. Amen. Hunt. Because that wicked woman or immoral woman is a hunter of men looking for a prey. Amen? Proverbs chapter 5 verse 10 Bible says Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth and thy labors be in the house of strangers. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many of you worship the name of Jesus? Proverbs 29 verse 3. Whose loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father, but he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. As the prodigal son, he lost everything. Same thing will happen with a Christian. Amen? May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. I don't want to go down because there are plenty of things to speak about. He hunt, she hunt for the precious life. Precious life, you know what? Because before God, a redeemed one is precious before his eyes. Not because of us, but because what is inside of us. Remember, we are earthly vessels. 
but inside of this earthly vessel is the most beautiful treasure and it is Jesus Christ that make us precious before God. You see the point? Amen? Second reason why we cannot lost after her beauty neither let her take us with her eyelids is because we will be guilty before society on God. Proverbs 6 verse 27, Bible says, Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? By the way, Amen? Gill's commentary says that a whore is compared to fire and is so called by the poets and it is a saying of Pythagoras or Pythagoras? Pythagoras? Pythagoras. It is, like, it is a like thing to fall into fire and into a woman. It's one of the verses or sentence of that poet, po, man of poet, poetry. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be born? Verse, it is impossible. Take coals in his bosom. That's when we go to make a barbecue, we try not to touch something with heat or something that is hot. Because we don't want to be burned. Amen? But God is making a question. God, can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be born? Verse 28. Can one go upon hot coals in his feet not be burned? Not. Verse 29 says, So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her in sexual relationship, shall not be innocent. Amen? Shall be guilty. That person shall be guilty before God and before society. Amen? And the guilty has to pay. That's why in verse 30 says, men do not despise Proverbs 6 verse 30 says, Men do not despise a thief. If he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry, but if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold, he shall give all the substance of his house. Let me tell you something important. For example, we say to justify a guilty. That man is so poor. And he has nothing to eat. And what he did was to go to his neighbor while he neglected the house and took from the fridge groceries to eat. I don't think that it is something to blame him because he was hungry. Law is law. And Bible says, though that thief is hungry and go to steal to satisfy his stubbornness, he is guilty. He has to restore sevenfold if he is found. And it was written in the law of God. Go to the book of Exodus chapter 22. Praise the Lord. From verse 1 to 4. If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox. <laughs> Could you understand? If he has stole just one and then he is found, he has to restore five more or, or four more. <laughs> it is not a business, right? <laughs> Amen. It was according to the law. And for a sheep, for a sheep, if a thief be found breaking up and be smitten that he die, 
there shall not blood be shed for him. If the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him. For he should make full restitution, and he hath nothing. Then he shall be sold for his theft. You notice that? If he has nothing to restore, <laughs> he will be sold to be to restore what he sold. If the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, whether it be ox or ass or ass or sheep, he shall restore double. Amen. He will not be innocent. Law is law. He will be guilty. Because he needed to satisfy his starvingness, his hunger. But in this occasion, the, my son, my son, keep my commandments, my son, if you are hungry, not for food, but for sex, and you go into your neighbor's wife, that's why I said to you that whosoever committeth a, a sin, is breaking all the entire law because the one who commits adultery is stealing is stealing what he does what it does not belong to him that woman doesn't belong to him and he's lying an other chain of sins that make him guilty before God you see the point amen how many of you worship the name of Jesus and Bible says, shall, he shall not be innocent. Even if he, ha, he wants to satisfy his stubbornness. My son, if you want to satisfy your stubbornness, God gave you a spouse, <laughs> a wife. Amen? How many of you worship in the name of Jesus? Chapter 5 of Proverbs. Verse 15, drink waters out of thine own cistern, and running waters out of thine own, thine own well. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad, and rivers of waters in the streets. Let them be only thine own, and not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed, and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee all at all times. Notice, let her breast satisfy thee at all times. Let her breast, not the other ones, but her breast satisfy thee. And notice, this thief went to steal to satisfy his stubbornness. Right? He will be guilty, not innocent. Amen? Praise the Lord. He will be guilty. Verse 31 says, But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. Following verse 32 says, But whose committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding? Why lacketh understanding? Because that person thinks that he will not be guilty. That person thinks that there will not be consequences. Lacketh understanding. That person thinks that he or she will be happy. But in this case, we are speaking about this, my, that my son, my son. Amen? Are you getting through? That person thinks that there will not be consequences. Amen? Lack of understandeth. He that doeth it, committeth adultery, destroyeth his own soul. Notice, this word or advice is talking with about a son of God. Because an unbeliever has a destroyed soul. 
by sin, by Satan. Amen. But this one says, destroy his own soul. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 11, please. It's a common verse that we know, but it is good to read again and again. Know ye not that the unrighteous, the ones who are not being justified or by Christ, by the righteousness of Christ, shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, or nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Amen? That is the purpose of the church of Christ. You and I to say, who are the ones who will be who will be excommunicated from heaven, from the kingdom of God. And this is the list. And the Holy Spirit says, be not deceived. Why? Be not deceived. Because the Holy Spirit knows or knew that the time was going to come where society was going to justify fornication. How does society justify fornication? It's a right of teenagers. That's why in the schools they distribute condoms. In America, in my country, do it. Amen? So operas, movies, psychologists. Amen? Education justifies fornication most terrible is Christian churches justifying adultery saying that there is a exception porneia fornication if your woman is committing porneia fornication you have the right to put her away to give her a letter of divorcement and to get another one. What about if she repents of that fornication, that sin? And if she gets money, fame, and that one says, Oh, I want to come back. Justify it. That word porneia in Greek means comes from the word fornication, which is relationship before marriage. You see the point? And pastors are justifying it through a wrong interpretation because they say that God Himself gave to the fornications of Israel a punishment by giving them Israel divorcement. That's true. God gave to Israel divorcement, but did God get another woman to marry? He went to the Moabites, he went to the Egyptians, he went to the other countries to get another country for him? Romans chapter 11 Bible says not because I am a Jew and God has not despised the nation, his nation that he chose. Same thing happened. Amen. Amen. If a woman goes to another, with, uh, after other men having sexual relationships or sex or uh, fornication, adultery, okay, separate from, from her. But don't marry, Bible says, as God didn't marry another nation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you in the message? That's why the Bible says, be not deceived. You know, because media, wrong interpretation of the Bible can deceive us.
can deceive us. Even my own thought, my own mind saying it will be okay in the future. And we think that it will be okay in the future. That's why the Bible says neither effeminates. Amen? Idolaters, effeminate, abusers of themselves with mankind shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed. Praise the Lord that Jesus says, I, you are clean by the word that I have spoken to you. The word of God cleanses us, washes us. But ye are sanctified through the Holy Spirit and change us into a new life. But ye are justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus imputed his life into us and God see us as righteous people when we were not righteous. Ye were some, but now ye are. Praise the Lord. Amen. The one who committeth adultery destroyeth his own soul in hell. In hell. You see the point? Amen? He will be guilty to pay in this life and the life to come. Amen? In this life, he, my son, has to pay. You know, with what? Proverbs 6 verse 30 says, with wounds, physical wounds, a wound and dishonor shall he get. A wound, stroke or blow, even from the husband of the trumpet, as, as was often the case. Why a wound? Look, my son, because this message is addressed to my son. After committing adultery or fornication, because probably that girl has a boyfriend, <laughs> you understand? Or, so, or had, and that guy still is in love. You, we don't know. Right? And Bible says, a wound. Wound caused by whom? That man who is jealousy. Proverbs 63, excuse me, 6 verse 34. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. Wow. When that man knows that you, son of God, is committing adultery or fornication with his woman, he will be angry. And you know why? Because the ego is hard. Amen? And he is threatened by your action. And he is wounded. Amen? And he wants to take revenge. And not only this, but also a demon is influencing this guy. Go to the book of Numbers, chapter 5, verse 14. Numbers chapter 5 verse 14 Verse 11 says And the Lord spake unto Moses saying Speak unto the children of Israel And say unto them if, a ma if any man's wife go aside And commit a trespass against him In other words adultery And a man lie with her Carnally, and it be hid from the eyes of her husband, and be kept close, and she be defiled, and there be not witness against her, neither she be taken with her. The manner, Bible says, verse 14, the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be defiled, or he or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him and he be jealous of his wife and she be not defiled. Notice, they used to come to the priest. And the priest used to take glasses of water and to say, okay, you say 
that you sense that your wife who is here was unfaithful to you? Yes. Because a demon of jealousy was around him. He said, okay, we cannot judge her because God knows it. So she is going to drink this glass of water. If she committed adultery, that glass of, wa of water will destroy her bowels till she dies. Wow. <laughs> Terrible, right? Amen? Because the Bible says that that woman could deny, say, no, 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 no. But why you don't drink? Drink it. Amen? Praise the Lord. Demons of jealousy. Proverbs 6, 35, Bible says, that that man full of rage, he will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. He will wound. Amen. Even if you say, hey man, listen, I'm going to give you money. Remember Jacob. When Esau was coming to kill him with wrath. What Jacob did, he sent servants and presents to calm down the wrath of Esau. But it was not the solution. What was the solution? To come to remain with God. Amen? The solution is to repent. The solution is to come to Him. The solution is to say, forgive me. Forgive all my sins. Change me. Transform me. And help me to depart from sin. Because confessing is not only by saying to Him my fault. Confessing is also abandoning that sin. Amen? Praise the Lord. A wound and dishonor shall he get. Dishonor. Amen. And his reproach, verse 33, shall not be wiped away. Wow. Dishonor shall he get. And his reproach shall not be wiped away. As long as he lives, though his life may be spared year it shall even continue after death and though he may repent of his sin and reform and change amen his reproach shall not be wiped away let me tell you something look at me God is saying my son keep my commandments because if you commit adultery that reproach will not be wiped away for all eternity. Even if you repent, will be registered for all eternity. That is the case of David. David committed adultery. Amen? And he repented. And God gave him his spirit and your heart and everything. But that reproach remained in Israel for all generations. And even that reproach remained not only in Israel but in heaven. Written in a book. Will not be wiped away. Go to the book of... 1 Kings chapter 15. I am finishing with that. Verse 5. David was... David had died years ago. And look. Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save. <laughs> you see, only in the matter of Uriah, 
the Hittite. Remember that he took his wife. You understand? Amen? Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 1 verse 6. New Testament. Matthew 1 verse 6. And you see, begat David, the king of, and David, the king, begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. Wow. <laughs> Terrible, right? Why the Spirit has to mention it now in the New Testament? Because God does not violate his word and he says that reproach shall not be wiped away amen just is just one example let me finish chapter 6 verse 20 let's summarize the message today my son keep thy father's commandment and forsake not thee the law of thy mother Bind them continue upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou goest, look, when you go out, it shall lead thee. How? Let not her beauty, let not, lost, lost not after her beauty in thine heart. When you see a woman like this, you know the commandment. It will lead you when you go out. Amen? When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee sleeping. Because you will not worry for nothing. You will not worry for anything. You will be in peace with God. Not so the one who is in adultery. He cannot sleep well. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. Praise the Lord. You remember the word of God and meditate in it. Amen. To keep thee from the evil woman. Praise the Lord. Let's stand up.